Team Rippers, let's get ready to make a bag. Saya Swag! Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kasaya, this is Saya Swag, and I have a new tutorial today, yay! <laughs> um, it's been a while, I've done lots of lives, but not a lot of pre-recorded tutorials, so I'm excited to get this one out to you today. So this is for the tag along, such a cute little crossbody from So Yours. And these are the two that I have done. This was my um, tester, the one that I did first, and this is the one we do in the video today. Such an adorable pattern. Um, there are a couple of different options for this pattern. She has a water bottle pocket option for the back of this bag, which is super cool. I just didn't do it. Um, I liked the style a little bit better. This is more of what I would carry, but I have seen the water bottle option and it is amazing as well. So there's style A and style B. We do style B in the tutorial today. Um, gosh, I mean, look how freaking cute these words are. <laughs> in my practice one, I use the Butta um, vinyl is so, soft and easy to sew with from Weft and Warp. I absolutely love it. I will link it below. Um, it was such nice material to work with. Look at this flap. You got a pocket. This is my pink fabric. It was calling me um, from New Moxie. I'll link that as well. It's one of my favorites. Um, and then it has a slip pocket on the back here. This one, I put the opening zipper pocket along the back of the bag. Okay. And then inside, it's super hard to see inside. It's just got one little card slot here. And that's it, because it's kind of a small bag. It doesn't need many pockets on the inside. And you have all of those outside pocket options. Um, I did use on both patterns, Decaville Light on all the main pieces, um, out of your seam allowances. And then that's, you know, I used a woven on my cotton pink fabric, my Heartwood and Hide tags, and then the rest of the hardware is from my website. I did a three, four inch cross body strap. Um, I mean, so cute. Okay, so on the one we do in the tutorial today, I did a tiny bit differently. I lengthened my zipper gusset by a half of an inch. I don't know if she's gonna change it in the pattern or not. Um, I did tell her it fits a little bit better just to lengthen it a little. Probably depends on the material you use as well. I tend to use vinyl and more stiff fabric, so I needed a little bit extra um, there. So I did add that half inch and I would do that again. I think it was perfect. Um, and then I put the zipper on the front of the bag this time. I kind of like that better as well. Again, we have this front pocket. It's a slip pocket here. You've got a zipper pocket here. You've got another slip pocket along the back. The black material is the Safino vinyl from Indo Love. This is called Theratex Waterproof Canvas, and it is from Fabric Therapy. It is gorgeous. It's got like this silky, silky feel to it. Um, Decaville Light went fabulously on it. I'm in love. It's amazing stuff. <laughs> I'll link that below as well. It's so pretty. Um, okay, and then inside, it's so hard to see inside the bags. It is a bound bag. You will need binding of some kind. Um, what is my zipper doing here? Is it caught? I need to trim my binding down a little bit along my zipper. There it goes. Okay, so it is just purple on the inside and it's got that, you know, card slip pocket there and it is bound. So you need either bias tape. I used just the canvas folded over in half, just a one inch strip. So however you want to do it, I mean, but it makes a gorgeous bag. I absolutely love it. I wouldn't say this is a beginner level bag, but um, it wasn't that difficult either. I think the hardest part was probably sewing around these curves. And that's probably the hardest part of this bag. So if you've had practice with curves, go for it. Um, again, Decaville light used on this bag. And that's it for this one because it was all canvas and vinyl. 
and I used my matte rainbow hardware that I sell on my website, heartwood and hide tags. Adorable. <laughs> okay. We're going to start sewing this little beauty up. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments below. Um, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I don't know if you noticed, I'm almost to 30,000 subscribers, which is amazing. I can't even believe it. Um, help me out to reach that. And let's get started. Okay, let's go over our pieces for this bag. Um, I am only using Decaville Light for my interfacing out of my seam allowances. And that's it because I'm using vinyl and canvas. So I don't really need much else. And I feel like the Decaville gives it a good shape. Okay, so here we go. This is my exterior main panels. And I have all of my pattern pieces clipped on everything just so I keep it all in line. I have it on one side of my exterior panel. I've got my Decaville. And then I have the Decaville on one side of the lining. So it'll be opposite sides of the bag. Um, but just the way the front, the front is assembled, it's better to put this Decaville on the lining part of the bag because it is a bound bag. So it doesn't really matter if you put it on the exterior or the lining as long as you have that stabilizer in there between the layers, you're good. Okay, so I have three of those. I am doing style B. I probably said that in the intro. I'm doing style B. Um, hopefully I'm doing these slip pockets right. I kind of messed up on my first bag because I didn't understand the way she had the pattern piece. I think she redid it in the current pattern, uh, the way it's worded. So I have two slip pocket pieces, lining and exterior for the front and the back. One is just a little bit taller than the other. I do have some Decaville light on the back slip pocket, I believe. Um, so there should be four of those. My exterior bottom piece, I just have one. My flap closure lining. I have two lining pieces and my Decaville is on one of those lining pieces for my flap closure on the lining, okay? And then my flap closure bottom piece, I've got a lining and an exterior piece. Yep. I have my exterior top, just one piece for that. My flap closure top, I have an exterior and a lining for that. And then I have my gusset and zipper panel pieces here. Here's my gusset piece and I have my deck of the light on that out of my seam allowances. Here is my zipper panel piece, deck of the light. And I did extend my zipper panel by a half of an inch. I probably talked about that in the beginning, whether it worked or not. We'll see. And then this is my handle for the top of it. And I did have to make that just a little longer as well since I made my gusset panel a little longer. So just be aware of that. And then my lining gusset and zipper panel pieces as well. I am doing a little card slot on the inside of this bag. It's just a single little card slot. I like the way she does it. So I'm doing that. I already put together my crossbody strap. It's just a normal three, four inch wide crossbody strap, the length of the vinyl. Um, and I've got all my hardware on that as well. I have some zipper tape. It's really pretty. I found it in my stash. I have no idea where I got it. Isn't that cool? It's purple. Um, my zipper pulls, my D rings, because I'm just doing the cross body, um, style and my nameplate. And then I do have some rivets ready to go as well. And that is all we need. All right, let's start sewing this bag. All right, just a little side note. I did forget to tell you that you will be needing a magnetic snap for that front flap. I already installed um, the first part of that snap, but you will need one magnetic snap. Okay, so I have my slip pocket pieces for my exterior. I'm gonna work on the back slip pocket first. It's the one without any interfacing on it, um, and it's the larger of the two. All right, so I am going to put these right sides together. I'm gonna sew along the top, turn it, and top stitch.
Beautiful. Okay. Now I'm going to lay this back slip pocket on top of my back exterior piece here. All right, get that nice and even. And I don't, again, I'm doing style um, B. So my crossbody strap is going to be on my handle. So I'm following the B instructions. I'm gonna baste this back slip pocket on. Although it looks still a tiny bit crooked, just a second. There we go. I'm gonna baste it from this way so I know I caught it. Oh, that's right. It's supposed to have just a little bit of a give to it. That's why. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so there's my back slip pocket. All right, I'm going to put that aside. I'm going to get out my front slip pocket piece, and that should have the Decaville on it. And I've already installed my magnetic snap on that one. Um because I messed up, <laughs> but it's fine. You guys have seen me do magnetic snaps a million times. I'll show you how I do the second half. All right, so now we're gonna do the same exact thing, steps as we did with that back slip pocket to this front one. So we're gonna sew it up at the top here, right sides together. top stitch on the top here. All right, beautiful. And then I'm going to add this piece to my exterior bottom piece. Like that. Done with that piece. I'm going to set that aside for a minute. And we want to do our card slot piece real quick. With the lining that does not have the Decaville on it. Okay. And we're going to be putting that on here. Okay. I'm doing the non fraying version of this card slot because I've got this canvas. So what I'm doing is I'm just folding this piece in half lengthwise, okay? And I'm going to top stitch along the top folded edge of this piece up here. And then after that is top stitched, I'm just adding it to my lining and I'm sewing it directly onto my lining. And then you just have a nice little card slot 
um, for your bag. Very simple and easy. I've got my um, markings all here, my placement of where it's supposed to be right there. And I'm just going to sew down and around this card slot. Very easy. All right, so there is my card slot, super easy. Love that. I am going to attach this to the back panel because we are doing binding. So we can go ahead and put our back panel with our lining together and I know I want the card slot on the back of my bag and that already has the Decaville light in between the two layers, so I know that's correct too. So I'm just going to clip these together, right sides out. So we're clipping them wrong sides together. So you should be seeing the correct side of both sides when you flip it over, okay? And we're just going to baste these two layers together. All right. Do it. There is my front and my back. I do need to trim this up just a little bit here. Just so all my layers are even and looking good. Beautiful, all right. We're gonna set that aside and go to the next step. I forgot to mention when we were discussing pieces that you do need some zipper tabs for this front zipper. So I have my zipper tabs here. All right, I'm gonna take those and just sew all, you don't always need both sides of the zipper tab. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it uh, for thickness reasons. I think it'll be fine. Sometimes if I'm doing it with like a vinyl zipper tab I only do the exterior side because you can't ever really see the inside part of the zipper but I'm doing both layers so sandwich that zipper in between we're going to be sewing those on all together just like so and then I'm going to flip them both out and I will top stitch that. And that's what it should look like when you're done. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. Same steps. Make sure you've put your zipper pull on your zipper before you do your tabs. Always a good thing to do. <laughs> I think we have all been victim to forgetting to put our zipper on. Okay.
Beautiful. There is my zipper. If you want, you can like sew these two layers together too so they kind of stay in place. Sometimes that's helpful if you have kind of slippery material like I do. These tabs are a little slippy. So I'm just gonna sew those two tabs together real quick. Beautiful. All right, now I wanna mark the center of my zipper. You can use a pen and mark it. I'm just gonna do really tiny snips, nothing big. Beautiful. All right, so I wanna get my flat closure bottom, my exterior. I want my zipper right side down, zipper pull to the left, and I am going to center that up. I'm gonna clip that, clip your center on that. Beautiful. Too many different kinds of clips. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to baste this on first. I'm gonna move that zipper pull over a little. And your zipper tab will probably be longer than your flap, and that is just fine. Okay, beautiful, all right. And then you want your lining piece on top of that. We're gonna sandwich that um, right sides together. Let me clip my center of my top real quick. Okay, right sides together. Center that up and sew that at your seam allowance. You're probably gonna have to move that pole out of the way. All right, we wanna flip all these layers up like that. So your zipper pole is on top and I'm going to top stitch along this side of the zipper. All right, I can go ahead and trim these tabs even as well with my flap. Perfect. Do I base that? I mean, it doesn't say to baste it, so I won't, but I think we're going to be basting it all together. Okay, I want my flat closure top pieces, and now we are just going to basically repeat what we just did with that flap along the top of the zipper, okay? So we're going to baste this piece on first, and then we will add the lining and do it at our seam allowance, flip it, and top stitch, okay? 
Okay. And now I want to take this lining piece along here. Make sure you're centered. All right, and now at your seam allowance. Beautiful. And now we're going to flip them both up and out of the way, just like this. And I want a top stitch along this zipper. Both layers are pulled up. So that is what we are looking at right now. It looks great. Okay, next thing we need to do, flap right side up. Okay, so we need the flap lining closure pieces. Okay, so I want the one without the decaville, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, without the decaville, and I'm placing it right sides together with my flap completely. And we are completely sewing that around because that is the inside part of this zipper pocket. Okay, this flap is kind of thick, so it's important to keep your layers, whatever you use for your layers on this flap, keep them kind of light. Um, because this does end up being a lot of layers for this flap because you have, you know, this is going to be three layers here and then you have a fourth with the Decaville that you're adding on to this. So especially if you have a domestic, keep this light. All right, so we're going to sew baste these layers all together first. All right, because see, now that makes a fully enclosed zipper pocket when I added this back piece on. So this should be, I know my canvas is hard because it's all the same, but this should be the wrong side, okay? All right, so after that is done, we want to add our magnetic snap, the other side of our magnetic snap to this piece first, the one with the Decaville on it, okay? And there are markings on all the pattern pieces here for that. All right, and then I'm gonna get my snap washer and mark that. And this is my other side. Get my little seam ripper here. Okay, and then install your snap. All 
All right, I'm gonna place some tape over that. like that all right so now we want to put these two layers together so I'm gonna go right sides together and clip that All right, beautiful. Now I am just sewing down and around. I'm not sewing this top piece because we have to turn the flap through that piece, okay? All right, here we go. Let's sew this up. Looks good. Beautiful. All right, I've got all my layers. I'm going to get some pinking shears here and go around my curves, okay? Either put little notches in it or do the pinking shears. You definitely need this curve clipped so it lays nice. All right, beautiful. And now I'm gonna turn this right side through. Here we go. edges out all right now when you're top stitching this flap if you don't think your machine can handle it don't do it um, the biggest bulk is right here where these layers meet that's your biggest bulk if you don't think your machine can get through that then don't top stitch it just give it a really good press um, I am gonna top stitch let me get my little thing out to protect my material so my foot doesn't eat it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and sew all of this and top stitch. It's pretty flat, I like it a lot. All right, here we go. I'm gonna need a little help getting up over that. And then I want to protect the back of my foot from that layer.
All right, and then you can go ahead and close the top of this flap up as well. Looks great. Beautiful. There is my top flap. All right, so the next thing we want to do is take our exterior top piece and we need to clip our center real quick on this. And on here, we're going to line those up together, right sides together and baste those two pieces. All right, here we go. Just basting. So now I need the exterior bottom piece, the one with the snap here, and we are going to center this onto here. Let me mark it out. Sorry guys, just a second. All right, just like this. And your snap might catch there, mine, mine caught. Yeah. Okay. And you're gonna sew that with your full seam allowance to that piece. Okay, so it's, you should be seeing the wrong side of this top piece and the right side of your flap and your front exterior piece. And you should have just enough clearance that you're not hitting this um, bottom slip pocket piece. You should have just enough clearance with your foot. All right, there we go. And then pretty sure we wanna go like this and top stitch that. Yes, yes. Um, no, we wanna go like this. We want to flip it all up like here. My seam allowance will be going down towards that exterior bottom piece and my flap is up and we're going to top stitch underneath that. Again, I don't know about your machine, but I have just enough clearance for my foot here. Beautiful. And that should be your flap. You should have a little bit of room when it closes. And then this will stay in place better when we um, attach it to our lining piece with the Decaville, which I think we want to do right now, right? Yep. We're gonna do that right now. Okay, so let's get our last lining piece here with the Decaville. And we're gonna be putting these two pieces together just like we did the other side. Okay, but this one's gonna be a little bit of a stretch because of that flap. I 
able to unsnap it there and get that all clipped into place. I may even just sew this part first. Okay, I'm gonna baste these pieces together. Come on. Again, it's right sides out. So the right side of this, right side of that. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Is put my name plate on. No, I think I'll sew a woven label up there. I think I'll sew a, a heart wooden hide actually. So we will do that after the fact. Okay, here we go. So now I'm basting these layers together. And I'm doing this top piece first so it doesn't fall. Make sure you got all the layers together. I missed right there. Let me just go right here real quick. Okay. Beautiful. Hey, look at that. Oh, so pretty. Okay, I'm going to sew a heart wooden hide tag right up here real quick. And then we'll continue. Okay, all done. I put my cute little, look at that cute little tag on there. I just sewed it all the way through both layers. So just remember if you have a tag, figure out where you want to put it. This flap would be a super cute place for it before you assembled this. Um, the back might be a cute place. So anyways, all right, so I'm going to put that aside and we are now going to work on handle and gusset pieces. So here is my handle. And we are going to go ahead and sew this handle up. So this is um, a one inch wide handle when it is done. And just be aware of layers if you think a full, you know, double folded handle is too thick. You could just do a single fold and do the seam on the underneath of the handle and that'll lighten up your layers a bit. All right, so for this one, we want to sew at a 1 fourth inch seam allowance along each side of the handle for this part. Right? Let me double check. Yes. So here we go. Made my needle a little sticky. I'm gonna have to clean that off. Okay, so there's my handle. I'm gonna put that aside. 
Let's work on our zipper panel. So I have my zipper and I cut it a little bit longer than my zipper panel pieces. And I'm going to add my zipper after I put this on there. Just It's just a little bit easier that way. All right, so we're only adding, sorry for the barking dogs. They just got into mud outside and I had to rinse them all off. <laughs> the joy of melting snow in the winter. Um, okay, so I have my exterior piece. I've got my zipper right sides together. I have my centers clipped here since my zipper is a little bit longer than my panel pieces. I need to just, you know, clip my centers there. And I'm going to baste the zipper along this exterior zipper panel piece first. And then we will add our lining piece. Okay, so now I'm going to add, whoops, on top of this, right sides together, I'm going to put my lining piece and then I will sew this at my full seam allowance. All right, so now I wanna flip both of these pieces out together here, and I'm gonna top stitch along the zipper. And then I'm going to just um, baste these two layers together all the way around. going to add my zipper pulls. I'm doing a double zipper pull. So I add one on each side here. All right. one and there's the other beautiful all right so next thing I want to do is add my handle now I am putting my D rings onto my handle. So make sure if you're doing it that way that you are um, doing the right <laughs> instructions for that. So, cause there's two different sets. And the first time I did it, I just did the first set, which is without the D rings and that kind of screwed me up. Okay. So you wanna do a couple of markings on your handle. You wanna do three and an eighth first here. 
Okay. And then, let's see, three fourths here. Is that right? Oh no. From here to here, it's three fourths. Okay. That's a little confusing, but I've got it. Okay. This one is three fourths wide here. And then you want to go an inch up here. <clears throat> All right. So I'm going to repeat that on this side. I've got a better handle on that now. There's my inch. Um, oh, no, I did that wrong. You want to do an inch. Sorry. Er, just kidding. An inch. And then you want to do three-fourths away from that inch. So one inch, three-fourths, and then three and an eighth. I'm just doing everything backwards. So this one's wrong. Um, there. Beautiful. All right. I'm going to get some double-sided tape. I'm going to try and center. I'm going to just clip where my center is at. Although I got to make up for that seam allowance, so I'm going to fold it a little bit more than that right there. And right there. That'll be my handle placement along this panel. And then I'm going to put some double sided tape along this first little area here. underneath this first little area right here. All right. So first I want to sew the handle on right here. I'm going to slip my D-ring on and then I'll sew it here. So the D-ring is going to be right in between these two lines. Okay. And then there's my center. The nice thing about this is you can just eyeball it and it'll look fine there. All right, I'm gonna do that first row of stitching up here first. I'm gonna check my bobbin real quick. Oh, it might be okay. I think we can do this first. Here we go. So that's my first little section of stitching right there. I'm going to be putting my D-ring in right here. And then I will be going back and doing some rivets along here. And give it a little bit extra stability. All right, and then I want to sew that right down there. Make 
to protect the back of that walking foot so it doesn't chew up your vinyl. Okay, so that is what it looks like when you're done. I've got my first little area, my D-ring, and then my second little area. I'll be putting two rivets here. And then when the gusset's completely finished, I'll be putting another D-ring down here. So it'll be really nice and secure. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat for this next um, other side. You'll be pulling up your handle like this so it will have you know, the actual handle, don't lay it flat and repeat the same steps. All right, so I have my rivets put through. I trimmed down my ends of my zipper and now we're just going to finish uh, constructing the entire gusset. So you're gonna take your two gusset pieces here. I'm gonna take the exterior and place it right sides together with your zipper panel piece and we're gonna baste that first. And then we'll add our lining to it, all right? All right, I'm gonna flip that over and now I'm gonna add my lining right sides together. So all of your right sides are facing in on the other side of this zipper panel and exterior gusset piece, make a big old sandwich. And now you're gonna sew that at the full seam allowance. And I think I need to change my bobbin now. All right, I'm gonna change my bobbin and then we'll top stitch that. Okay, I have a new bobbin. <laughs> All right, we wanna pull these pieces down and we're gonna to top stitch. So you pull them both down together and we are going to top stitch along this gusset piece here. All right, now we wanna repeat. So you wanna take this exterior zipper um, gusset, or not zipper gusset, the exterior bottom gusset piece and bring it up to the other side of your zipper panel, the other edge, and we're gonna do the same steps. We're gonna baste that on first and then we'll add the lining. bring up the lining side and it's just making a full circle. So now we want to turn that all out and top stitch that. Along here. Beautiful. All right. The other thing you want to do on the gusset is you want to make it one.
full piece. So you wanna connect these layers together along the bottom. Marley Mae is whining at the door. I'm so mean. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of stretch and clip them all together so they're even, so that I can baste both layers together. these two layers so they are one Okay, so we have one full circle here. I want to make sure and clip all of my centers real quick. All right, so I'm going to line up these seams first here. Marley. All right, and then I want to clip down at the bottom. Oops. Or however you want to mark your centers of everything. I'll be doing this on my main two panel pieces as well. These, the side's already marked because I clipped it earlier, so that's right still. And this should have a clip. It does. And then I want to take it the other way because I need all four centers. <laughs> Just a minute, baby. All right, and then I want to clip it going this way too. All right. Yay! All right, I think the next step is we're going to add this all together. So get your bias tape or whatever you're using to bind canvas. I'm going to use some of that floral um, canvas to bind my edges and we will continue. All right, just a little side note. I did go in and put another rivet right down here. So I've got three rivets total on each side of that gusset. I have clipped all four sides, right? All of my centers on everything. And now we are going to attach the gusset to the main panel pieces. Um, I'm doing this one just a little bit different. I'm gonna put the zipper up front this time instead of along the back of the bag. I think I might prefer it that way more. So I just start by clipping all of my centers first. And then I ease everything else into that. So I'm going to clip my center up here. And put in a couple clips to hold that all in place. First. And then I like to go down to the bottom and clip that into place. And we are doing right sides together. So you should be seeing the lining side of your gusset. 
I will be putting a ton of clips on this gusset. It will be covered in clips, just so you know. All right, and then I line up my center along this side. And I will be unzipping my zipper. It is kind of easier to keep it undone while you're doing this. Or open, I should say, not undone. Open. And then I'll go to this side and do the same thing. And then I will just go around. I may make some notches in my gusset to get around these corners nicely and help my material lay. Um, I will not be putting snips in my zipper though because I don't want it to fray. And the more clips you put in a zipper, the more likely it is to unravel and fray. So I will not be doing that. All right. But for these bottom corners right here, I'll be doing some and they are pretty tiny. They're about an eighth of an inch in because my seam allowance is only one fourth. So you want to keep them within that seam allowance that you're given. Okay. Okay, so I clipped that and it'll just help everything lay better. So now I can fit that in there nicer. If you are a fan of using staples, you can use staples along here. I don't feel like it's necessary for this bag, but um, if you're kind of new to this and have a harder time with gussets, then go for it. Staple those corners into place. Just make sure again, it stays out of that seam allowance that you will be sewing and that you're able to take those staples out. Hi, Marley. Hi, Marley May. Hi, baby. Okay, like I said, lots of clips. <laughs> okay, so for this zipper, I'm going to open it now. It just makes it easier when we're doing all of it. When you're sewing it, when you're clipping it, all of it. Okay. And I did lengthen my gusset, my, not my gusset, but my zipper panel um, by a half of an inch. And I don't know if she's going to change the pattern to that, but I really think it helped. Like this zipper fits a lot better with it lengthened a little bit. It was a little too tight on the first one I did. Much better. Still almost, I mean, maybe could take a little bit more, but I think it'll fit okay. You just really wanna make sure when you're sewing this zipper up that it doesn't have any wrinkles or bumps, okay? You wanna keep that zipper smooth. All right, so let's go ahead and sew this on.
Okay. So that is my first go around. Sewing that on there. It looks good. All right. So now I want to take my binding and attach that to this. So I'm trying to do this. Um, canvas it's a little slippery so I don't know how well it's gonna go um, but we're gonna try it so I'm just folding this in half and clipping it to my bag to cover up that seam pretty easy straightforward um, yeah so we're gonna go around and do that and then sew that on Okay, there it is. I've got my binding all clipped on. I'm going to sew that on next. Hi, Oakley. Hi, baby.
Okay, let's see what we've got here. All done going around, make sure I caught both sides. It looks like I did. It looks good. You won't be able to see a lot of this when you're actually um, getting inside of the bag and it's all done. I think it's great for what it is. I think it worked nice. I like it. Um, yeah. So let's turn it. I'm just going to show you real quick. I'm going to turn it and we'll show you. Make sure our corners look good, all of our edges. Yes, it looks nice. Make sure it zips up okay. Hey, look at that. Yeah, turned out good, okay. So that is the first part. Now we basically just repeat everything we just did for the other side. Do you see? It looks cute when it's all in there. I like it. Okay, let's repeat. All right, so I'm doing the next side. Start by matching all of my corners and we'll clip it all up and sew it on. Okay, we're gonna turn this out. Here we go. This one's a little tricky because it's kind of got a small little opening and um, it's Decaville heavy, so it's gonna take me a minute. Oakley, back up, honey. Go lay down. Go lay down. <sighs> okay. Let's push out all of our corners. Looks pretty good. Yes. <gasps> This is pretty dang cute. All right. That is it. Ta-da! 
there is our tag along. Oh my goodness, that turned out so cute. I love it. Yay! Let's put on, this little corner doesn't want to come out. Come on. Let's make sure this little corner looks right. There we go. All right, let's put on our cross body strap. And then we're all done. That is it. I love it. So cute. Ah, that is so cute. Ta-da. I hope this tutorial was helpful to put this adorable little tag-along crossbody together. There are, you know, two different options on this pattern. The water bottle option looks adorable if you wanted to try that. That is, you know, I think a great idea, but I really love the size of this bag. This is kind of the size that I would carry. Um, all right. Thanks for watching. And please let me know if you have any comments or questions down below. I do link all the materials I used, where to buy the pattern, all of that information. If you click on the little arrow underneath this video, it gives you a whole area of the description of this tutorial and has all those links for you. Um, as always, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you next time.